something you must understand about the Kabbalistic tree of life. It's not based on supposition, theory, fantasy, etc. It's based on factual human experience, okay? Ancient masters of awareness, if you will, um, actually uh, touched upon that highest, uh, most inclusive level of awareness and essentially came back from that experience with uh, notes, you know, I saw this, I did this, I experienced this, I perceived this, etc. And that's where the tree of life comes from, where the Sefer Yetzirah comes from. From factual human experience of these higher states of awareness. <clears throat> and they charted that awareness, the wholeness of that awareness. Not just, you know, not just the Kether part, not just the most expansive, most inclusive part, but all the other parts of awareness that make up you know, the whole body of awareness. And in that process, they came to this description, this uh, sort of illustration of the structure of awareness. And that's the tree of life. So this is all based on human experience of these various realms or types or stages, phases of awareness that have been repeatedly affirmed throughout time. You know, this wasn't just a one-off where one person went and had these experiences, came back and wrote about them. These are experiences that people have repeatedly throughout the course of time. Because basically, it's a map. It says, you are here, you can get anywhere within this, the body of awareness. And this is how you do it, okay? So it's an instruction manual, basically. In fact, that's one interpretation of the Sefer Yetzirah that uh, Arya Kaplan talks about, that this is an instruction manual, uh, directions, not just descriptions. Okay. So, <clears throat> those ancient wise ones, and <laughs> all the ones since that time, um, who have experienced the same thing, when they touch upon that highest level of awareness, we symbolize it with Kether. Now look at the essential meaning of this image of Kether, that lone white sphere at the very top. Kether means crown. It's something that stands above human consciousness. It's a top human consciousness. So it's something different, something a whole nother order of consciousness that stands above 
our sequentialized consciousness, our brain-bound, brain-bound awareness. Together stands above that. It is separate. It is not separate. It is different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we choose the color white, but it doesn't truly represent. What is closer represent, a uh, representation, is the idea of brilliance. Brilliance. It has absolutely no color whatsoever. It only has light. Brilliance. Okay? And that is what this highest level of conscious awareness is, is light. It expresses, we perceive it as light. Okay? And all permeating light. In this light is everything that exists. Everything. All at once. There is no sequence here. No time, no before, no yet to be, no tomorrow, no yesterday. There's just no time. The whole is right here, right now. The concept of perpetuality doesn't exist at this level. It just simply is. All present. The whole of everything that is, that has being, is here within this single awareness. It is a single awareness. Absolutely everything that is. Everything that exists. <clears throat> Simultaneously. Now, at this uppermost level of awareness, there is... <clears throat> There is no differentiation. There's no parts of self here. However, there is the awareness that there are all these infinite number of parts sort of down here within its own body. It realizes that it is a Thing that has parts to its own being, but it's still just all one thing. Now, the crown, and that's so sublime that there are no parts, there is no differentiation, there is only self. Beyond self is completely unknown, completely unknowable, because self is all that is, all that exists is here in Kether. The one self. The unity, the one self. The I. Now, <clears throat> for
or humans, that is the experience of this crown, this kether level of awareness is the awareness of I, of I-ness. If we go inside and we're really quiet, we can sense that I. This is the I of the solitary self, okay? I. But I am I among an infinite number of I's. And it's that infinite number of I's all together that is the I. So you just follow that I all the way up to that infinite I that includes all those little I's. And it's all one eye. All those little eyes are like mirror reflections of this one eye. It's an infinite number of mirrors of the exact same eye. Everything that exists has a little piece of the eye, a little you know, reflection of the one I that's exactly the same in everything that exists. Kether, crown, is everything. And it's in everything. Everything that exists is Kether. It's the most common thing in the universe. The easiest thing for us to connect to. It's no big deal connecting with the I because you are always rooted in your I. <laughs> I mean, that's where you live. So it's just a matter of recognizing it for what it is. What it connects you to. It connects you with Kether. That infinite expanse of awareness. Of I. That is Kether. That is the crown that stands above our normal awareness. It's the weight we bear, you know? <laughs> the weight of responsibility we bear is the fact that we are a part of everything. We <clears throat> are a Part of everything, everything that happens, we are a part of everything. There's no blaming someone else because we are all, every single one of us, a part of everything. We have a place, we have a responsibility, we have a duty, you know, we have a role to play in the whole, okay? <clears throat> so, the I. The I is... Hmm, the feeling is of an infinite enclosure, an infinitely large self. An infinite expanse of brilliance. That is Cather. That is the power 
power of awareness. It penetrates, it permeates everything. Everything is composed of that awareness just to different levels of its manifestation. <clears throat> so that infinite brilliance is the ultimate uh, oh, the ultimate unity, the one self. Now, <clears throat> oh, that's not all <laughs> that Kether is. Kether Everything below in the tree of life is contained in Kether, okay? That means that everything below has Kether in it. I mean, it's made up of large chunks of Kether with a little bit of new influence as you descend the tree each time. Another little influence, another little clarification or complexification uh, it becomes more and more complex as you f go down the tree that is uh, the eye coming into manifestation or manifesting um, <clears throat> so Everything else that we describe in the tree is just an aspect of the eye. It's the eye is a whole thing, a very complex whole thing, essentially, and yet infinitely simple. You know, it simply is one thing. But awareness experiences itself in all these different levels, in all these different ways, from an infinite number of perspectives, an infinite number of experiences. <clears throat> so, the I realizes that it has this being, that it is being, that it is a being. That's kind of just what consciousness does. It self-realizes. You know, it realizes itself. It identifies as I. And all the consequences of that statement, I. You know, that's recognizing that I exist, that I have specific characteristics, specific things that I do, ways of doing the things that I do, ways that I look, ways that I feel. Okay? So, I realizes that it exists, that it has meaning, that it means something. This is Hokma, wisdom. Now, in Hokma, we have essential meaning. It is the essential meaning of I. I mean something. This is Hokma. This is what I mean. Okay, and what the that awareness, that I awareness, all of its meaning is right here in Hokma. The whole of the I is now translated into meaning. And it's an infinite number of meanings that compose this singular meaning of the I. And it's... Uh, let's look at the difference between wisdom, hokma, 
and Bina, understanding the difference between, in the words, the meaning of wisdom and understanding. Now, wisdom is just automatic. That's essential meaning. It just is. You don't have to uh, do anything to create it. Um, <clears throat> it just simply exists. It is the I. It just is the meanings of the I. Understanding, on the other hand, is a process. We come to an understanding. We have to put together the pieces to make an understanding. Understanding is a sequentialized process. Wisdom is not. Wisdom, the essential meaning in Hakma itself is undifferentiated. There are no little bits of essential meaning that make up the whole essential meaning in Hakma. But Hakma, the eye in Hakma sees in the manifest world that there are an infinite number of parts to that essential meaning. So Hakma is unity of parts. Kether is the unity. Hakma is a unity of parts because it's cognizant of its nature. Okay? And in that realization that it has all these parts in there, that it has all this meaning, this meaning has a shape. It has an appearance. And that's Bina. This is essential mean, essential form, excuse me. Central meaning is Hakma, essential form is Bina. The essential meaning as it passes down with the awareness of the I. It's the awareness of the I moving through itself, being aware of these different aspects of itself that powers the tree. That is the movement of energy that creates one sephirot, then the next sephirot. So there is a movement of awareness from essential meaning into form. You cannot have form without essential meaning, or essential meaning just automatically has form. It has shape, it has contour, it has color, it has sound, it has idea. You know, it's just all kinds of shape, infinite shape, infinite form, is Bina. With that infinite meaning comes a realization that that infinite meaning has infinite being. It must manifest. It must have form. And that is Bina. It takes the essential meaning and converts it into form. The realization of all of that ascent, that infinite essential meaning, is the realization that all of that essential meaning has being. It all exists. It all is present here and now. And it all has form. That is how it has being, through form. Without essential meaning, there is no form. Without essential form, there is no being. There simultaneously exist. So this is Kether looking down into itself. It sees that it means something, that meaning has being. And because that meaning has so much being, there is a heaviness, so to speak. And Bina 
must give birth, gives birth to Tifra. Bina is the mother who gives birth to Tifra. All those forms become temporal. Here in Bina there is no sequence, but they must have sequence. So that is Tiferet. The temporal sequential realm. Kether, Chokmah, and Bina are non-sequential. They're eternal, supernal. There is no before and after. I mean, it just all is now. But that needs, it must, because this is the nature of the I. It materially manifests itself in the first step in that material manifestation is Tiferet, the creation of what I call individual selves. These are the solitary selves. It's all those mirrored reflections of the eye. Suddenly, you know, independent of each other. They're all solitary self-contained little reflections of the eye. And each one of them has a certain combination of essential meanings that it is reflecting in that mirror. You know, that mirror reflects only a certain combination of essential meanings that is unique to each and every one of those individual selves, those little reflections, that infinite number of reflections. And that's why we call it Tiferet, because it's beautiful. It's really astoundingly beautiful to see this infinite expanse of these little reflections of the eye, and each one of them is utterly unique. Okay. Now in Bina, essential form, awareness <clears throat> likes to coalesce. It likes to <clears throat> It's attracted to similar aspects of itself, okay? In Bina, we're starting to see that there are distinct aspects. You know, form is starting to take shape. It's just constantly, infinitely changeable form. It's just infinite change. Uh, nothing doesn't settle on anything, but still... It groups together, and at the lowest edge of Bina, before the, uh, the sequential realm emerges, forms, just on that edge, it, it forms what I call greater selves, uh, what Barden would call holy guardian angels, okay? Now, these greater selves have a certain quantity of essential meaning that they must uh, incarnate into the temporal realm, the sequential realm. This grouping of essential meanings needs to take sequential Form. It needs to be sequentialized. So the greater selves are who actually birth the uh, individual selves into the temporal realm. Each greater self, you know, uh, births, you know, an unknown number of uh, individual selves. And then collectively, 
they make up the whole realm of individual selves, the whole temporal realm. Everything that exists has an own, its own individual self, its own little reflection of the eye of a specific set of essential meanings from the eye. So these greater selves cast their seed, as it were, into the temporal realm. So, <clears throat> we are individual selves suddenly in Tiferet. But here, for the first time, <clears throat> the I experiences other. In Tiferet, the eye is aware that all of the other is itself. <laughs> so that the eye of Tiferet is a collective eye. <clears throat> Here awareness is fully collectivized. <clears throat> but also individuated. You know, it's, it is still I and other. Even though other looks exa almost exactly like me, it is still other. It's Other is made of the same stuff I'm made of, but it looks a little bit different. It has a slightly different, you know, set of essential meanings that it's reflecting. Okay? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> I, again, you know, is, wants to join, wants to coalesce. Awareness always wants to come together to collective eyes. And in Tiferet, it is a collective, because it recognizes its own similarities, but it begins to see that some things are more similar than other things. We begin, we begin to get sequence. And that sequence begins on the basis of a likeness. And this is Gajula or Chesed, which means mercy or loving kindness. <clears throat> This is about the connectedness of awareness. So all awareness connects through a likeness and we have an infinite continuum of a likeness. <coughs> Everything is related. We come together. We work together. <clears throat> huh? So, <clears throat> we live for, <clears throat> with this connectedness, but at the same time, we recognize that although all of those little reflections of the eye are similar, they are also different. Okay. So the next phase of sequential sequence of sequentialization is differentiation. In Gedula we have a likeness. In Gebura we have difference and uniqueness. And here that little spark of the eye becomes aware, remember it's all about self-realization here, becomes aware of its uniqueness, of the things that make it utterly unique in the universe, its very own specific combinations of essential meanings out of that infinite ocean of essential meanings. Each individual self has its own
combination of meanings. And that means that each of the, those individuals has a unique power, a unique power that it contributes to the cosmos, to the whole, to the infinite body of the I. Every single individual self has a unique contribution. This is Kebura, which means severity. It's also known as Pahat, which means fear. Now, <clears throat> this is severity in the sense of <clears throat> cutting off the extraneous. You know? defining a specific place, a specific shape, a specific I. That is what is meant by severity. It's the recognition of the unique quality of the individual self the things that make you utterly unique. So, so now, I need to also say that this realm from Tiferet through Gebura, through this establishment of sequence and uniqueness of the individual solitary self, this is the realm of subjective meaning. Okay? Essential meaning is an objective meaning. Meaning, subjective meaning, is my meaning. I mean, okay? That is subjective meaning. It's not essential meaning. It is subjective meaning. It is only part of the picture. Okay? That little mirror of I-ness is reflecting only a, a limited number of essential meanings. So it expresses only part of the picture when it's only that when it's only reflected through that mirror okay so being so uh, powerfully subjectified in kebura the individual self must take on the form. Well, it, it realizes that it's more than just subjective meaning. It's also significance. All those subjective meanings have relative significance. This is where we start to interact with all those radically different individuals around us. Suddenly, it's not so much that we're interacting with similar individuals, but we're interacting with different individuals. That puts it in the realm. All of our interactions, and this is all about interaction of self with self now, of self with other, all these interactions are significant. They have an impact upon us. We have an impact upon the other individuals that we are interacting with, okay? That brings us to Yesod. The astral realm, the realm of significance, which is an emotional valuation in humans. It is an emotional valuation. Hence, 
all the tales of the astral realm and how how beautiful and dramatic and uh, you know sort of movie like fairy tale like it is you know because this is all emotionally driven perceptions and all of our perceptions here are about <clears throat> the significance of our interactions with other that is yesod. Yesod means foundation and really it, it's the foundation of our material reality. So the world now that awareness exists in at this point in the tree is all about interactions with other and the significance of those interactions and how they of everything affects everything else. Now the first stage <clears throat> in that development of the interactions is Netzach, which <clears throat> translates, it, it doesn't translate, there is no word Netzach in the Hebrew language. Um, <clears throat> but it has been translated into English variously. Most common in Western Hermetics is victory, okay? But it really has nothing to do with, with, with victory. Um, I call it vitality, because that's much more what it's about. Um, and to my mind, that's what the letters in the word Netzach add up to, vitality a fertile vitality. Um, at any rate, this is resonance. This is the essence of interaction with other. Resonance. You affect me and I affect you and we both begin to change in similar ways. That's resonance. We are resonating. Okay, we're coming closer together in that continuum of the likeness. It sort of draws. We draw each other together. That's resonance. This again, the unifying, the uh, <clears throat> collectivizing of awareness is very strong on this whole side of the tree. <clears throat> resonance and we all resonate <clears throat> but in resonance we begin to lose the uh, definition of self that self we met in Gibura that absolutely unique self we can only resonate to a certain degree before we have to experience dissonance until we have to say no that's enough resonating I am me this is me and this is hot excuse me <clears throat> which means splendor the infinite splendor it's referring to and that appears with that capacity of awareness to protect its uniqueness and to willfully express its uniqueness. Everything has that power within it. Okay? That's hot. And the splendor is, again, this, this image of these infinite number of reflections of the eye. You know, each unique, but bursting out with an even brighter radiance that declares 
their own uniqueness, each and every one of them. That's hot the infinite splendor because it is this statement of I am this I <laughs> I have these characteristics I have this essential meaning that I must express and to do that I must have form and we have Malkuth now, Malkuth, the word is generally translated as kingdom. Um, I don't like that translation. I've translated it as queendom, just to, you know, throw a spanner in the works and point out the sexism um, of how we think of things. Um, so now I just translate it as domain. This is my domain, okay? So for me, my Malkuth is right here, my physical manifestation. But <clears throat> some important things about physical manifestation have to be um, recognized in order to truly understand what Malkuth means. It's not just our physical realm, and that's it. What it is, is the temporal, present moment of time and space. Okay? The temporal, present moment of time and space. So... <clears throat> It is the only moment that exists. Right now is all that exists, okay? It's the only thing that has substance. Substance exists only right now. You know, if you don't understand that, you meditate on it a bit. And, you know, try to wrap your head around that. Now is the only moment that exists. The past is memory. <clears throat> the past is memory. The present contains everything that's happened in the past. You know, in those past nows. But it's all, always happens right now. When we remember the past, we remember it in a now moment. You know, we're remembering the past. We can never relive the past because it doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is right now. <clears throat> All right? Perception only occurs in the present moment. Now, human perception, hopefully you uh, have learned some things about human perception, to enough to know that there's big chunks of time that we don't perceive. We perceive little snapshots, process it, perceive another snapshot, process it, that's how our brain works, in perceiving through our senses, okay? <clears throat> so, the present moment, the true present moment, uh, has no duration at all. It is infinitely finite in duration. In the temporal realm, we have infinite sequence, infinite duration, and infinite change. So, the temporal 
present moment actually has none of these. It is infinitely finite. So finite that it's between sequence. It happens between the sequence of things. It happens between the, the <coughs> changes. It happens between the infinite number of changes that happen in every moment. And it happens in no duration. Okay? So, that's a very uh, mystical thing. Very magical thing. Because you follow that into that true, infinitely finite moment, and you find yourself back in Kether. It is infinitely infinite, because it is infinitely, in, infinitely finite. <clears throat> they are the same thing. So it is one thing. <clears throat> It is all one thing. It is all contained within the I. And the tree is the I, the awareness of the I, the I awareness, moving through itself, experiencing every little tiny bit of itself. It experiences every moment of the temporal realm. Every experience in the temporal realm of through, from the infinite number of experiencers within the temporal realm, this is the I experiencing itself, perceiving itself. This is what the I does. That's what it means to be the I, to fully self-realize. And our lives are the I enacting this little bit of its self-realization. And we think of it as through us. But it's just the I doing it, thinking all of our thoughts, you know, experiencing all of our experiences, perceiving all of our ex perceptions and feeling all of our, you know, this is just the I doing all this. The I doing all of this. Yet, at the same time, it's me. I am responsible in this temporal moment for being the best that I can be, for doing the best that I can do, for perceiving the most that I can perceive, because that's how the I self realizes. So, I've got my part to play, you see? <laughs> None of this absolves us from responsibility because we are responsible in the temporal moment because we are the I actively in acting, you know, this temporal moment. Okay? <laughs> okay. I think that better be my summation of the Ten Sephirot for now before it uh, ventures into the five hour video. Okay? <laughs> Until next time, I'll be talking about the mother letter path.